Okay. So uh, these two names is someone that you're already familiar with. And um, one is in the field of life sciences while another one is a passionate marketeer. Uh, one loves uh, biryani and chai <laughs> while the other lives on pizza and coffee. So uh, Manuela Solomon, the first speaker that we have, she holds a master's in biomedical sciences and molecular biology from the King's College London and works as a senior manager at Strand Life Sciences in the field of oncology. She is actively involved in various ministries in our church and also did one year ministry training from Bethel Reading in California. She loves to travel and explore new places while she is not spending time at home with her family, a dog and about 200 plants. Uh, you must follow her on her Instagram if you're interested in plants. Um, so that's Manuela or as, or as Manny, we, you know, we warmly call her. Um, the second speaker is a passionate marketeer, passionate about all things growth and marketing. He has experience working with various hyper growth startups. He has experience in setting up and growing high impact team too. Currently, he leads marketing and growth at On Juno. I hope I pronounced that right, Sam. Um, it's, a fin it's in the fintech world. So with that, please join me in warmly welcoming our speakers today, our very own Manuela Solomon and Sam Thomas. Uh, the first speaker is going to be, okay, let me, before I invite individual speakers, I just want to invite Manny and Sam to just come over and say hello uh, so that everybody can see you. Hi. Hi, Sam. <laughs> hey. I'm Annie. Hi. Okay, now that you've seen the faces, so I'll hand it over to Manny. Please uh, take over the session. Awesome. Uh, let me just share my screen as well, if that's possible. I've stopped sharing, so you should be able to see it. Thank you. I think you'd need to also make me co-host. Um, just give me a second. Sure. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to really thank you for giving me this opportunity to share the little that I have learned and uh, hopefully some of the fundamental things that have kept me going. I hope that it blesses you and helps you on your professional journeys as well. Uh, so like like I was already introduced, uh, I, I have about eight years of work experience in uh, the life science field. And what I'd like to lay before you today is that my journey is one um, that is far different from what I expected. So even as I share about staying on course, uh, the first thing that I'd like to share with you is that staying on course doesn't necessarily have to look like the way you planned 10 years ago. I'd like to really like lay this out, you know, in in front right before I start. It looks different for everyone. And so I just um, hope that you keep that in mind as well. So stay on course. When I start to think of what stay on course means, when you actually do research on what it means, it, it's associated with either war or a race. There's only two main associations of what it's like to stay on course. So as I was just looking, um, I don't know, uh, sorry. Okay, as I was just looking at a few pictures of somebody who stays on course, I'm also into athletics and sport. So it's my favorite analogy to use. If you actually look at somebody who's running a race, the first thing you will notice is that each of them has their own lane like any of these pictures, you will never see a runner cross lanes. Like when he starts to when he finishes, he has one lane in mind. It doesn't matter if there's a curve, it doesn't matter if it's straight, but it's his designated lane. And you know, with I, I, I'd like you to keep that in mind because your staying on course is your particular lane. And, you know, staying on course is associated with the verse Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off everything that hinders us, the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance. Here's the important thing. The race that is marked out for each of us. 
So the most important thing I'd like to say is staying on course is a personal journey. You know, Psalm 119, uh, the message translation says, you're blessed when you stay on course. Walking steadily on the road revealed by God. Your course is revealed to you by God. You're blessed when you follow his directions, doing your best to find him as you, you know, stay on course. Don't go off on your own. Walk on the road that he has set for you. And again, goes on to over and over again say, keep the course that he has set for you. So, I mean, this is a lot of text. I'll just summarize it. I just will probably send this over to you later if you're interested. But the first thing I'd like to sort of share is this analogy of you can only keep your course if your eyes are fixed on the goal. To most of us young people, we think our goal is your job. If your goal is your job, every time that you change your job, you have a new goal. You know, and what's going to happen is you'll run multiple races in life. But the Bible actually talks about our entire life as a race that we're running towards an end goal. So that should actually change how you look at your job. Your job is not your goal. As believers, if we say meeting Jesus is our goal, what we're doing is we're running our entire race here on earth, keeping our eyes fixed on him to become more like him. So as we run our race on earth, we're actually trying to become like him. That's the goal. And your job is actually an opportunity or a place for you to practice that. Like, you know, I really want to challenge the way you look at your job. It is not your end goal. You don't achieve your goal when you get that dream job. No, it's always an opportunity for you to practice being like Jesus. That's the goal. We're going to meet him face to face. We're going to be like him when we complete our race. But until then, every moment, every day, our goal is to be like Jesus, to fix our eyes on him so that we can be like him. So your job is actually your medium to practice that. Your job is actually your medium to, to represent Jesus in your workplace. So I want you to keep that in mind as we, you know, progress a little further on. You have to fix your eyes on the goal ahead. Have you ever seen a runner look left and run straight? Do you actually think he can run straight if he's looking left or right? If he's looking at the runner that's running behind, like beside him, do you think he can actually press on towards the goal? You become really slow when you shift focus from the end, from the goal. So even as you know, you're keeping on course, the most important thing is not to look at the next person's lane or the next person's lane. You are not looking at the runners that are on your left and your right because they have their own path. They are on their own course. What applies to them may not actually apply to you, but you will be so easily entangled by their lives, their course, their ways, that you're actually losing focus from your course. So don't look at other people's courses to determine yours. And have you ever seen a runner look behind? Like, can you imagine if he looks behind and tries to run in front? Like, he's not going to get anywhere. He's probably going to trip and fall, let alone like seeing an obstacle ahead of him. Like, I, I remember one of these things. When I first uh, started working, I had this incredible boss. And she really spoiled me good because she was so good that post that, I really struggle to work with other bosses. And it may sound really strange, but it's true. Every time I had a boss, subconsciously my brain was comparing my boss to the previous one and going, man, she's not good. Or oh, he's not good. Or oh, he's not as good as her. Or oh, he's not as good as my previous boss. But what am, I, what am I gaining out of that? What am I gaining out of living in the past? What am I gaining out of keeping that as my standard? I'm really not progressing forward. 
I'm not achieving the great things that he has ahead of me if I'm just stuck in like a glorious phase, you know, of my past. So I just want to encourage you, your past should not lead to regrets, should not lead to you moving backwards in your professional career or in the way you perceive your present. It's only meant to give you lessons. Your past is for lessons, not regrets. It's not meant to determine your present. But the way that you tackle your present will determine how far you can go ahead. So, you know, I just like my biggest takeaway for you is keep your eyes fixed on what's ahead. Run towards what's ahead. Um, another thing that I'd like to share with you is change is inevitable. Guys, this is a fundamental truth. No matter, there is not a single person on this planet that has a life looking like this. In reality, your life is like probably this. And it looks different for everyone, but change is inevitable for everyone. Everybody's going through their own set of obstacles. But I'd really want to encourage you to change the way you look at these obstacles. Like, they're going to happen anyway. So you might as well learn to overcome it the way Jesus wants you to. That's what I'd like to share. So even when this pandemic hit, I, I remember the first thing that happened to me is I was devastated because they shut down my physical office. For those of you that know me, I love talking to people. I'm really a people's person. I'm not good with phone calls. I love one-on-one, -on -one, like face-to-face. -face. And when they got rid of my office space and everything went virtual, I was devastated. And to most people, they at least knew this was a temporary phase, you know, of working virtually and then going back to office. For me, it was a permanent phase as long as I was in this company. The rest of my life looked like, you know, working online as long as I was with this company. And I was really struggling, really struggling to keep up um, just my motivation. I was grumbling a lot in this season. And, you know, there was a part of me that goes, I just want the season to pass. I just want the season to pass. I just want the season to pass. But if we live, when we, when we have a challenge ahead of us and we go, I just want the season to pass. Can you imagine? I've just lost out on one and a half years of my life. That's never going to come back. If I just waited and just sat there going, I want the season to pass, this season will pass, this season will pass. One and a half years of my life that could be so fruitful, I just let it go. Why? Because I didn't have the ability to adapt to improvise, to go, hey, Jesus, what do you want out of me in this moment? What are you trying to do out of me in this season? I never planned this. So it's this image of God being the potter and you being the clay. If God was the potter and you're the clay and you just, can you imagine God holding you like this? What sort of jar would you have become? Like you would probably have no shape. You would not be molded at all. In order to mold clay, there's so much movement allowed allowed you have to like get the edges you have to press down the base most of the time a lot of pressure is what causes the most beautiful things you have gold how do you think it comes out it's being refined through the fire the most precious things the most beautiful things are those that have learned to improvise to adapt to go through the seasons because the seasons will come the Bible is so clear. There are seasons in your life and there will always be seasons in your life, henceforth as well. The beauty is, God, how do I navigate through this season? And you know what? Just not navigate through to thrive in my season. What are you trying to do through me? Every one of these seasons is you being molded and you being built in character. So if you let the season go by, you're not actually being built in character. You're not actually accomplishing what the Lord wants from you. So I just want to encourage you that this season, no matter what it looks like, if it's tough, if it's dry, if, if it's not what you planned, we have a God that makes no mistakes. So if the season's happening, oh, he has plans for you in it. So don't let it just pass by. You know, change the way you look at uh, tough seasons. Because he's a God of the process. He's not a God that just goes... 
He's not a God that just goes, you're done. He is a God that you know, really builds you up. He, develop, he works in the foundations. He's not superficial. He doesn't just put little things on so the root. You have to change how God is working on us. He is molding us through every season. So when you are confronted with an obstacle ahead, you should be super excited to go, oh my gosh, God's going to do something marvelous through me. This season is not an accident. This season is intentional. My God is always working for my good. How do I capitalize on my season? Instead of going, oh, this season looks not my kind. I didn't expect this. This is not what I planned. No, no, no. What is God doing for me? So he, we, we can only look at when you're walking on the earth, you can only look like a kilometer plus and minus. When you are flying in an aeroplane, what do you actually see? That kilometer is nothing. That kilometer doesn't even make sense. It, you can't even see it. It's so small. It's a small portion of your life. Right now, what you're going through seems massive, seems like everything to you. Look two years down the line, you're not going to remember this season the way you are right now. But you will always remember what you learned out of it. So I just ask that you understand that God looks at things big picture. You know, one of my favorite books is Exodus. And, you know, think about this. Moses was born an Israelite. Do you think God did that accidentally? Absolutely not. Moses would have been like, oh, why was I born an Israelite? And years down the line, he was sent to rescue the Israelites and the Israelites treated him as his own. The Israelites would have never listened to a foreigner. They'd be like, who are you? You don't know anything about my culture. And therefore God was intentional about making Moses, you know, be born an Israelite. But then why did God take him to Pharaoh's palace? If he wasn't raised in Pharaoh's palace, he wouldn't know how to talk to Pharaoh. Would you be able to just walk into the president's office today? No, but if you worked with the president, you could, right? So I'm just, I, I'm just challenging you to think of things the way God does. God makes no mistakes, even from the moment he was born to the moment he went to the palace, to the moment he had to flee, to the moment of wilderness if he didn't have a moment of wilderness he would have not met God in the burning bush if he had not said yes to going to speak to Pharaoh he would have never seen the wonders of God 40 years later Moses has seen why God did everything the way he did but Moses as a baby doesn't understand that so what I'm trying to challenge you with is your current season you won't understand it now but you will understand it when you look back a couple of years, he, is, he doesn't make any mistakes. He is intentional about why he places you in your current job. He is intentional about why he places you where he places you. It's not by accident. So don't live like it's an accident. Don't live like God doesn't know what he's doing. So I just want to encourage you with that change of perspective. And you need the Holy Spirit to stay the course. The Holy Spirit is called the counselor. So seek his counsel. You look at David, when he heard of war, what's the first thing David did? He went and inquired of the Lord. When Hezekiah heard of battle, what did he do? He went straight into God's presence and he says, tell me what to do. So that's actually what we're called to do, to run to God, the only author of your course. The only one that knows what you should do. Very often we run to counsel everywhere and says, what should I do? What should I do? They didn't design your course. God did. So let's run to the author of your course. Make that your lifestyle to go, okay, God, what do you want to do in this moment? God, what do you want out of me? How are you building me? Run to the only one who knows. And so I just want to give you like this takeaway. You cannot control what happens to you. Nobody could have seen this pandemic happening. Nobody can, like, what, I remember I went through this season where a few of us got acquired. We felt so helpless because it was leaving behind everything that you knew and going into the new, this new company, into this new leadership. You sometimes cannot control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it. 
if the if you take away something i hope it's this that you cannot control what happens to you cannot control your seasons but you can control how you respond to it i remember when we started transitioning into this new workplace style everybody was so grumpy and i was trying so hard to be cheerful and i would tell myself okay god i have so many things to thank be thankful for yeah, now that i'm at home i have more time for my parents i have more time for my dog i have more time to enjoy meals together with my husband i started looking at everything good coming out of the season and when i was on the call i was the only cheerful person on my weekly meetings and you know somebody actually asked me it's like how are you coping up with this man how are you happy in this moment like all of us are so annoyed how are you happy people are noticing how you respond to things cuz everybody's going through the same thing but if you respond differently you're representing jesus so how are you making these opportunities count so three things eliminate quitting as an option you don't quit until it is a compromising of your character or until the lord tells you to till then it's not god's style of work he expects you to persevere he expects you to adjust to the new norm and thrive in your season they are not accidental seasons they are intentional so trust that he knows what he is doing and one last one that i'd like to leave for you is this is this is just the same thing never be little the influence that you have in your workplace that is your ministry i went to ministry school for 9 full months came back and go and went okay god i'm going to get into full time ministry and i heard the lord tell me go back to your job go back to the workplace you left from to go to ministry school i'd like you to imagine this i left my workplace to go to ministry school and he says go back to that exact same place exact same team and it just makes you realize this one thing god looks at your workplace as an opportunity to witness you don't have to walk around with a with a plate saying jesus is my savior no man the way you respond people are going to notice people are going to notice when you stand out it probably doesn't even involve words it doesn't probably involve any like action but you will stand out in the way you are honest so you're not called to work you're called to represent him do you think your ceo is going to walk into church probably not these people are never going to walk into church and god's presence you probably have to bring it to them you are the only way that they can probably encounter something so i just want to challenge you with your workplace be a be a person of integrity carry excellence in the way you do if they give you a task do it so well your character will begin to represent who you worship in your workplace and you know people are noticing every little thing every little thing is noticed don't think it's not noticed they'll ask they may not come and ask you but it's being noticed so you know take that upon you to to change the way you look at your workplace take it upon you to change the way you look at ministry in your workplace you are not there by accident that's not how god works he is intentional about where he is placing you he is intentional about how he wants to use you so just partner with him in what he wants to do in this season in this moment for you so i just want to bless you with that and i hope that you have something to take away from this my experience god bless hey thanks mani um it is definitely insightful for me through the season that i am going through right now to um you know persevere uh, through the changes through you know challenges um, so definitely i think this i am sure this was something that spoke to a whole lot of us um before i hand it over to our next speaker i just wanted to take this time to share that uh, we are a professionals forum um and we have uh, you know with, between our teams we try and support people who are looking for jobs um who have uh, who are looking for some guidance in terms of cvs um any counseling that you need in terms of uh, you know your work your business your career 
um, we have a whole lot of expertise within this group and within our church who are you know willing to share their knowledge uh, with you all. Uh, any help, any support that you need in terms of prayer as well, uh, you can write to. I'll show it at the end of the session. You can write to professionals at abcwo.org uh, if you have any questions or any of these support that you need. Um, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. So with that, uh, let me hand it over to somebody uh, who likes pizza like me. <laughs> uh, hi, Sam, uh, you know, over to you to, for the next session. Yeah, hey, thanks guys. Um, you know, I, I don't know why I said I'll go second because there's always like a benchmark set after the first person speaks. But, uh, you know, what's so beautiful is uh, the two stories that Manny and I am going to share are so different. It will come out as I share. And that's how beautiful our God is. Like each story is different. And, you know, I just pray through my story, uh, you know, you will take something that would bless your heart. And, uh, but before that, um, you know, there's, there's a very short poll that I want to do before, uh, you know, I go to my, my, my session. Uh, Ken, if the poll's ready, you can send it over to the audience. Um, let's, yeah. So the first poll is up. So, you know, just, it'll come on your screen. Just, just select, uh, you know, what option you fall into. Um, come on guys, I don't see any votes yet. <laughs> Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Oh, wow. There are a lot of, there are a lot of people above 10 years. Oh my gosh. Okay. Nice. And current work situation, happy looking for a job switch. Okay, cool. Now the words are coming in. Nice. Nice. Come on guys. Few, few more, few more, few more words remaining. Just wanted to get the lay of the land before I actually share my, my story. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. So it looks like 50% of our audience has more than 10 years of experience. So I don't know what that I am doing. includes the speakers too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here, but awesome. And the second question of, was current work situation, right? I think, okay, majority of you are happy with your work. Um, I think 20% of you, you like your current job, but not able to bring impact. And 25% of you are saying uh, you're looking for a job switch. Cool. Sounds good. Um, I think we'll end the poll on, on that note. Just wanted to try and gauge the audience that, uh, you know, we, that, that we have here. So let me just go ahead and share my screen before I start. Yeah. All right. So, you know, yeah, like I said, right, I think Manny's story and my story is so different and that's how beautiful our God is. So, you know, just wanted to, uh, just give me a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to talk about today, right? So one is I wanted to start with, you know, the importance of upskilling and staying relevant in today's world. Second is for the people who are looking for a job switch. I'm going to give you some tips, uh, you know, on even during the pandemic of how to go about this, right? Uh, the third thing we're going to touch upon is excelling during the pandemic. Like, how can you put your best, even though it's this remote work situation going on? And how can we excel as believers in the workplace? And lastly, just some spiritual learning. So while Manny was preaching fire through the word, I'm going to be a little more practical and then I'll, I'll end with some spiritual learnings. Okay. So I hope you guys, um, you know, take away something. So let's get started. So this is my journey so far. Okay. So <laughs> that is my journey from an average engineer to a high impact leader, you know, and I have worked with various startups as Rebecca said, I worked under various leadership teams and, you know, founders in our country, um, some noteworthy founders as well. And e through each season, God was unlocking something within me for the workplace, you know? Uh, so uh, I think, you know, that's been my journey in a nutshell. So God has taken me through different seasons and through each season, he has a plan 
for each one of us and he's unlocking something right and uh, you know that's been my journey in a nutshell so far but this is where i started okay so this was at a um uh, at a at a college event a tedx event and there was this placard it says you know nothing engineer and that was so apt for me you know like i i was here i joined engineering just cause maybe my dad my dad said yeah let's go to you know let, you know go for engineering but i joined engineering without having a clue about what i was doing right i was just this average engineer so lost about my future but you know i just want to encourage you guys you know it's normal it's okay this was who i was 4 years ago 4 or 5 years ago you know it's okay if you're confused it's okay a lot of people sometimes we come in these forums and we like oh god has a plan for you all of that is great but you know i'm just here to relate with some normal people like it's okay i was there and but what i would say is you know even though i was doing my engineering and it was a top engineering college my friends were getting placed ref, left right and center getting jobs i kept my eyes on jesus i i came to church i was faithful to god and through that season god opened the door for me and i found my calling in marketing right that was my first job i i was like wondering how would i get that and and just god supernaturally although i was so lost during the season i had no clue about what i was going to do about my future but yet i was faithful to god that's important god opened the door for me so i just wanted to encourage you i i wanted to start with this to set the context of actually where i was right the same sam that was like 4 5 years ago was just this this guy who had no clue about his future but god's working god's working and i want to encourage you guys uh, about it's okay it's totally okay sometimes people come and oh you know there's pressure right but it's fine so i hope you guys relate and that's where my journey actually started right now coming to you know the whole thing on on upskilling right we are living in a world it's it's the world of digital transformation okay everything's changing every every day right and we are living in what's called a skill based economy you know back in the day you know someone with 30 years 20 years 15 years of experience we would be oh wow let's respect them they know everything uh, let them just guide us but now the tables have turned guys like we are living in an environment where 25 year olds fresh out of college with so much knowledge are impacting organizations my in my own team uh, our strategist is 2 uh, years younger to me she's 25 and she is driving the entire team so it's so important for us to upskill and stay relevant right and it's it's even more important to for us for we as believers right to be at the forefront of what is cutting edge in today's world right and upskilling could mean different things for many people right whether you read an article every day or you watch youtube videos about your industry every day or um, you know you you talk to peers you talk to leaders in your industry or or what not right so you stay relevant you stay fresh because i believe it is only through that people will see yourself people will see you as noteworthy and they'll come to you and and that's how you become a high impact individual for your workplace right so it's so important for us as believers like i think being a slacky believer at the workplace is just not an option for us i think we need to strive for excellence and that comes by us upskilling you know being the best at what we do being competent right so that someone can be like hey i need to go to him man when i have a question or i think he has a perspective let's 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 go to him or her you know for example in my own in my own life um so i started my life in marketing and sales right business development but in the year 2017 there was this whole boom about digital marketing everyone was like whoa digital marketing social media this that and what i decided was i didn't even tell my parents i just i just decided to go all of a sudden to a 3 month classroom course to study everything about digital marketing so i spent 3 months every evening after work 
studying every single thing that digital marketing has to offer right and that was how my journey started in digital marketing i upskilled myself i got myself competent and that's how i entered the world of digital marketing and now even more so i i am in that industry where things are changing like every day there is a new policy change there is uh, you know way how marketing is done before is changing things are evolving technologies are evolving channels are evolving so i need to you know really stay abreast especially for the industry that i am in now you may relate to your own industry or your own space that you are in but i think it's relevant for everyone right that we as believers are at the cutting edge of what's happening in in today's world right um uh so that's that's something that is i think important right now coming to people who are looking to job switch right job search and job switching you know sometimes i feel like this is such a difficult thing but actually you know in hindsight through my own journey after doing two three switches i think i can give some insights on my own journey and you know it can help you so just talking about job switching right i think first before we even go into it i think the most important thing for you to understand is to identify identify yourself who are you picture yourself visualize yourself in the workplace what's your passion what skill set what's the grace that god's inherently given you right and then think about you know as you're picturing yourself the kind of place that you want to work in is it a b2c is it a b2b is it a small team like a startup is it a semi like a mid mid size company is it a large company so first identify a lot of people young people i meet today they just um uh you know they just like so lost because i i believe that they have not even spent time about thinking about what they even want to do and they just go randomly you know you know just just go randomly and and just try and do things uh you know their own way and i think it's so important i think this it's it's a framework that i have followed first identify right what are you passionate about and god will keep things inside of you he's already placed things inside of you i think it's just about you to i mean it's just on you to identify right second have a story right stories are powerful like you know how many of you know apple uh steve jobs right he whenever he comes for a presentation he just knows how to how to sell a product in the same way i think you and i need to learn to sell yourself and there was a quote my senior manager made one day you guys are in marketing and if you don't know how to sell yourself what are you even doing in marketing <laughs> and it gave me such a eye opener i'm like yeah that makes sense so you know have a story it's something that's so unique about you right have a story for yourself that you can boast to others right um thirdly very very simple you know start with your resume this is your blank canvas unfortunately <laughs> through my many years of uh you know especially the last two stints i have interviewed at least hundreds of people and i have seen way too many subpar resumes this is your first impression and you know there is a quote right you never get a second chance to make a first impression so pay attention to your resume this is your canvas canvas that will give you that first impression and i'm sure rebecca who's in hr will agree with me but you know but why i bring this up is so many young people right we're just taking some template put something you know no thought at all about what you want to what you want to communicate through this one page or two page sheet to another person like a hr professional or a cxo right so start with your resume i make it a point to update my resume every 6 months cuz i am living in that kind of a industry right everything is changing so every 6 months i keep updating revamping i'll see oh maybe i can do this i can put this right to highlight who i am as a person in the workplace um lastly i think you know linkedin right as a tool uh so i i just would would explain if if someone asked me to explain linkedin it's like the facebook for work okay so i think it's a great so ask any hr right if if they want some information about a candidate they'll say two things hey send me his linkedin profile or send me his resume his or her resume these are the two things 
that hr professionals do you know send me his linkedin profile send me his hr uh, sorry send me his resume so i think it's worthwhile to invest in linkedin right and i'm just going to show you so i think two years back uh, i was very prevalent on facebook instagram i you know i used to put all my stuff but then i realized that linkedin is such an untapped channel so i just started you know just just putting stuff on linkedin about you know my learnings i just put stories i just put uh, observations of the industry that i am in and just look at what it did right for me uh, you know i just started posting and people started recognizing it you know like like you can see all these screenshots these are some of my posts that i've been putting and you know people started recognizing and, and slowly i i saw that you know linkedin as a channel you can get that attention in the workplace as you build your your brand you know online and and this is my journey so i don't know how it will be applicable to you but this is just something that i have utilized uh, to stay to stay ahead right in the workplace like just just i i would just put you can visit my linkedin bro you know I, i'll keep posting every once in two weeks you know just just posting random thoughts and then look at the impact <laughs> like random people would you know hrs would just would just reach out to me hey i see that you know you are very active and then I, so through linkedin i've got speaking opportunities through linkedin i've uh, you know got you know hrs have reached out to me for potential positions and these are not like small positions these are really big like like you know some of the best startups you know hr people head hunters they they are on linkedin so they are looking for professionals like like you know high quality skill professionals right so uh, you know i don't know how it will apply to you but you leverage linkedin start with your profile clean it up a lot of times you go to linkedin there won't even be one picture you know <laughs> and i think it's an amazing tool where a lot of hrs your 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 future bosses might be there right so make an impact there is is all i'm trying to say um other things you can do you know uh <laughs> when it comes to job switching i have a few hacks okay so i'm just going to share some nuggets over here um <laughs> so one is uh you know i i would send cold emails to to hrs with an impactful subject line there was this one company that i really loved i i love this company so much in the fintech space uh, this was two years back and i was like wow i want to join this this company and i somehow got the hr's email id and my subject line was meet sam your next growth leader like <laughs> i just said that as my subject line you know and and i got a and i got a call from you know their team head of marketing saying that hey we got a, we got this uh, you know we got this uh, you know this email we want to have a chat with you so you know cold emails they work but make sure your subject lines are good okay so that you know usually hrs inboxes are like too huge so for you to stand out those are some things that you can do there are some new age sites so if you guys are looking to join startups um today there's angel list angel list is an amazing platform to discover startups well funded startups uh, you know that are in the space different industries they have they've got a lot of filters insta hire is another new age tool where a lot of hrs are are on there trying to scout for you know for professionals so you know angel list insta hire there's obviously traditional sites i have never used them but note it's it's not worthy to to talk about it uh, you know indeed shine nokri just put your resume out there you never know how a call from them can can just change your life right and also like i said from my previous example leverage your online network your network is so important build your network offline and online in the workplace right um uh, i i can't tell you that quote is so like so applicable applicable your network is your net worth literally so start investing in your network right all right so i hope that that really you know gave a context of for people who are looking for a job switch or you know you are looking to search for a job now coming to you know excelling during the pandemic right let's just start with this okay remote work is not easy <laughs> if you agree just put a reaction um you know just just give me a thumbs up uh, i don't know if i can see you guys but yeah just just put a reaction if you relate to this it's not it's not easy right 
uh, the workplace is not a comfortable place. And now with the pandemic, it's, it's made it even more, right? It's a hostile environment. Uh, everyone is, an, is in a silo. So there's a stat, there was a study that said almost 53% of professionals actually suffer from mental health because of remote work, especially for people who have joined the season without any context of remote work, right? We are so used to going in person, right? And suddenly we are in this, in our homes, there is a blank screen on the other side, you know, and, and sometimes it can real, really be draining, right? And I think there are, uh, you know, there are some things that, that you know, you can do. Uh, like there are some practical things that I have learned during this season, you know. First of all, I'm going to say this out loud. There's no substitute for hard work. Okay, if you want to excel in any place, whether it's in person or remote, there's no substitute for hard work. Um, also, I think there are certain frameworks that you can use to get yourself accustomed to this kind of a lifestyle, right? And I think this is good in India. I think this trend is going to continue. I don't know. You can never say now with how things are going, but there are certain frameworks like, you know, get your workspace ready, right? This is your holy ground. And uh, there's another uh, thing that I followed that the 1991 rule for the next 90 days, the first 90 minutes of your day, you are the most productive. So use that time to make, you know, the full use of, uh, you know, uh, you know, this remote context, because you start your day and you look at social media, you look at all of these things and, and you start your day with that mindset, right? But you are most productive in your first few hours of your work. So, you know, negate distractions, set the env environment, right? Another thing that I've learned actually from my peers actually is I, I was so hardworking that I would, especially in my previous stint, uh, I would not take breaks, but it's okay. Take necessary breaks, right? I think you're only just uh, hurting yourself if you're not doing that. Uh, learn to say no. You know, th these, these are things that you can do, some practical things you can do, uh, you know, while you're working in the remote context. Another thing uh, that has really helped me is have a friend and a mentor. So I, <laughs> I have a lot of mentors in, in church, but when it comes to work, I actually have a mentor who's a non-believer and, and it's totally, uh, you know, I, I just find I have so much confidence in him. Uh, one of my biggest trials in my workplace I had was in my previous stint when I was supposed to do an unethical thing in the workplace. And the first person I ran to was this person. And I just, for the first time in my life, I cried in front of him. I'm like, dude, I'm in this situation. And he helped me out of that. Like, I think it's so important for us to have a friend and a mentor, especially this season as young professionals, right? Have a friend, have a mentor, a person that you can just go to outside your work, your work context, who can encourage you, who can give you tips, right? And, you know, during that season, which was so difficult for me, I just went to him and, and he gave me his perspective. And, and through that, you know, we, we, I overcame that season, right? And it was through this medium of a friend and a mentor. Um, very quickly, um, I think time is running out, but to managers and leaders in, in I, I'm sure a lot of managers and leaders, I think the onus is on you, on us. I'm also a small time manager now. I've got five people, five people to set the environment, you know, for young people, you know, uh, be intentional with your team. You know, Jesus, if you looked at, look at the life of Jesus in the Bible, every person he met, he was intentional. Someone took something away from Jesus when they met him, right? In the same way, I believe leaders and managers today, you are setting the context, uh, sorry, setting the environment for young people in your own teams, right? So I think the onus is on you to set the, um, you know, the, the environment. And I think it's so important for you, get, for, for us as leaders to constantly be in touch with people, you know, take constant feedback, have constant feedback loops, especially for new join, new joinees, right? Have a proper 30, 60 day plan for them. You know, a lot of young people, they're, they're just stressed out coming to a new job and you have the responsibility of taking them. I think it's so important to have a constant touch point with these new joinees, right? Go the extra mile for someone who's struggling. I still remember there was this girl in my team who, 
um, we were having a one on one call and and she was just saying i'm struggling and I was like okay and uh, i i during the weekend i just slacked her i said hey how are you doing uh, i hope you're doing well that simple thing like changed her entire thing hey i've never had someone you know message in me about work uh, you know to encourage me like this and i was like wow that is such a simple thing what did i even do right um, you know i think it's important to encourage young people i i think what i'm trying to say is the onus is so high on on us as leaders and managers to really uh you know drive people uh, and make an impact for young people especially today and in the context that we are living in so just wanted to share about that uh very quickly some spiritual learnings um you know uh i got saved long time ago <laughs> i don't know when exactly but long time ago but my dad led me to this scripture the moment i got saved matthew chapter 6 verse 33 seek ye first the kingdom of god you know in every situation that you're in honor god seek him right i think you will be rewarded seek god first that's the first thing i've kept that as a motto ever since i started working you know last in as as i told you very briefly i had this uh moral check you know the 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 company asked me to do something and i was just not comfortable and i came to this scripture honor god first what are you going to put first are you going are you concerned about your work or are you concerned about what god uh, what honors god in his eyes right second for a long time as a young professional i kept god and work very separate i'm like god on sunday i'm very passionate about you on monday this is my territory but i think you know as you go higher i think you you know this perspective came to me right that you literally have heaven inside of you you have the third person of the godhead literally inside of you and that's the holy spirit and in john chapter uh, sorry jesus said uh, in john chapter 16 verse 7 it is to your advantage that i go that i go away because if i don't the advocate won't come uh, in john chapter 14 verse 6, 26 as you can see on the screen he will teach you everything the advocate romans chapter 8 verse 26 and the holy spirit comes helps us in our weakness right so we have this access as believers and yet so many times and including my my own life i've just not tapped into this like how foolish of me and you know whenever you're in high pressure pressure situations when you know you've got a big presentation you know just a simple prayer to the holy spirit holy spirit i'm entering this room i'm entering this meeting give me a wisdom so such a game changer right love and serve him you know sometimes uh, i hear this uh, don't tell me life is too busy to not serve god you know i think as you serve him as you honor him as you worship him he will elevate you to places that you can you never dreamt of and you know although life you know work life is busy you know you can serve god in whatever way at your work you know i've been involved in youth ministry ushering team life group college fellowship you know so many different avenues and we as a church we are a volunteer driven church right there's so many ways that you can serve god so don't tell me you don't have time you know serve god and you will see you know honor and serve god you will see how god will just reward you right and that is what i wanted to talk about next when you diligently seek god when you keep him as your focus you know it is he who rewards those who earnestly seek him remember our reward it is jesus and him alone it's not about your salary it's not about your impact or what you do all that is secondary but your reward is jesus right and that's been my some of my my learnings and this is just just ending on this note i this was during my third year of engineering where i had no clue but i it felt like i was prophesying to myself <laughs> and i and i gave this quote to this organization that was leading something um you know if you're struggling in the workplace god has a plan for you i want you to know that god has a specific plan for you right isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 i will make a way god says in the wilderness where there seems no way i will make a way trust him 
and Habakkuk chapter two verse one. You know, God has positioned you in every season. You will be ready, and that is what I want. I want to release to everyone in this room. He will position you, and you will confidently take your stand and your watch post and station yourself for where you are supposed to be in this season. You know, on that note, uh, you know, I just want to end. Uh, you know, I hope this this has encouraged some of you. Uh, you know, and through my journey, you've taken something away. Uh, very quickly, I just want to just want to make a, just want to lead in a simple prayer. Okay. For those of you who can relate to something that I said, or you know you're just somewhere lost, right? If that's you, could you just, as a physical act, just raise your hand, put a reaction, and I'll just pray over you very quickly. If that's you, you need prayer. Just just raise your hand. Cool. I see some. I see some hands. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Cool. I see a couple of hands, but but yeah, let, let me just, just pray for you at the workplace. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, this, this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, that you have given. I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, you have seen these hands. Lord, I just pray, Lord, for a fresh anointing. Lord, wherever they are, Lord, I just pray for clarity. I pray for a fresh anointing, Lord, a fresh touch of your Holy Spirit. Help them to realize lord help them to experience you lord all over again i just pray for a special grace lord over them and i declare and decree lord that they are successful lord that they will bring impact lord lord i pray for people who are anxious that your peace that passeth all understanding lord would be with them help them to experience your peace lord and i pray lord um i, I just pray lord for uh, your grace to be upon them. We just thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Sam. Uh, we have some questions already. So uh, there are quite a bit of questions. Uh, I will probably go from backwards. I guess it's because uh, during your session, they must have uh, you know raised these questions. One is, um, how do you think professionals of your generation are able to handle change as compared to the previous generations? What do you think you are doing differently? Is, I mean, is that, is Manny, if me? you can come online <laughs> as well. Be yeah. <laughs> Manny, please help me. <laughs> Sorry, could you just repeat that question again? So that I, I get it. So how do you think professionals of your generation are able to handle change as compared to the previous generations? What do you think you are doing differently? Yeah, I think I, I'll go first and then Manny can take it. I think uh, we as a generation are already so adjusted to change because of just the situation that we're living in, right? I think the technology that has been there the previous decade, I don't think any generation has, has even experienced the kind of change, the magnitude of change in just a few years, right? So I think, I think inherently as a generation, we, we are already there. But I think some things, I mean, you know, some things that, that really make a difference is, you know, we, we have this God that we serve, right? And I think he enables us in different seasons and he leads us and guides us. So I think that's one key differentiator among believers, young people who are believers and, and the rest of the world. We have this one key thing. What's that one th key thing that's different? is that we have this God who lives, lives inside of us, who's leading us, who's nudging us. And I think that is something that's different. But inherently as a generation, I think we are way ahead just because of the different technological advances and evolutions that has happened. So I think that's something that's in inherently there. And that's something that I think our generation is used to. So we are more capable of handling changes uh, is what I'm guessing, but, but that's just a few one perspective that I have here. No, absolutely. I agree with Sam as well. It's a simple logic, like as funny as it sounds, like 
there was so much difference even between my sister and I when we went to college with just four years of gap. I remember I got my first phone when I was like in college. She got her first phone when she was in the eighth grade. Like we are constantly advancing. Like the the very like in a matter of four years, you will see a huge gap in the way you used to respond to things, the things you had access to versus what everybody has access to. And this is only going to change with the generations ahead. So I think you're brought up with um, much more exposure and and therefore you're always a step ahead and this is going to always advance yeah okay i think there's another question which is similar as young new age professionals what are the things that you think are outdated and the previous generation keeps holding on to it's similar question um, but it's asking you know what is that is outdated specifically is there anything that you want to add I, I can probably say that yeah, you know, coming from <laughs> perhaps I'm older than all of you. So, uh, <laughs> so I can probably say that, you know, from, from what I've seen, you know, I did my master's a little later, so I could actually, you know, work with the younger generation or study with the younger generation. So I can actually say that, you know, what, what Sam mentioned as well, um, is change is constant, you know, adapting. I think one of the, the, mistake with the previous generation is so they're set in their ways and they want to have their own way so the only thing that perhaps we can do is make sure that you're flexible and you know able to adapt um so I, that's that's one thing that i see it myself too you know it is hard sometimes but you have to be open to change um there are a few more questions that have come earlier what has been their significant learning or takeaway in their career as a believer um, that's a great opportunity. I'm only telling you that, like, I think that's also what I shared at the very end, that it's a really great opportunity for you to even represent your beliefs in that moment. So never take it lightly that you have been granted this medium to, you know, show Jesus in just the way you act, speak and think. You don't have to verbalize your faith, just your very character. If it stands out from the world's normal, you are representing Jesus, you know, so that just that idea of salt and light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, There's another I think, question. Um, yeah. I think for me, uh, just to take a dig at this, right? One of my, like in my first in when I just was fresh out of college, I thought young people should just listen, sit and listen to what, you know, managers and senior leaders have to do. But my biggest learning is I think the kind of world we're living in, even a 25 year old with the kind of knowledge they have can bring so much impact. And I think Paul writes, right, in First Timothy to young Timothy, don't let anyone look down upon you because of your age, but set yourself an example in word, in speech, in love. And he, you know, he goes on on these traits. So I think we as young people literally now, especially with the world that we're living in, like the skill-based economy that we're living in, we now have the stage to literally bring that kind of impact no matter your age, like I, you know, in my own company, my founders are going to, you know, us and Hey, what do you think? Like they'll keep, they'll keep coming. Right. And I think it's an amazing opportunity for us as young people, the world that we're living in, uh, the kind of knowledge that we embrace and the kind of evolution that's happening, the kind of creativity that's happening. I think the, the onus is just on us. I think if you have that confidence, make use of it and, that's been my biggest learning as a young professional that that has been untapped for so long. But yeah. Okay, I think the next two questions are related to, you know, being virtual. With virtual interactions all around, what are the best ways for team building? And there's another question that says how to have work life balance. Manny, you want to go first? So I'll do the work life balance because that's something <laughs> I figured out. <laughs> but you can talk about team building. <laughs> Cool. So I'll, I'll go first on the team building. Yeah. Uh, I think it is so important uh, to, you know, especially for leaders, right? Um, you know, there are some things that I do in my own uh, context. So every Friday, we have something called as uh, chill, a chill session. So you just come Friday at six, just open your cam and just chat about anything. Could be pizza, could be chai, could be what you're doing. It's nothing related to work. And 
trust me that has been one of the most eye opening sessions you'll ever have you know just just learning about different there was this one girl uh, in my team who went to goa so that entire session was her opening her camp showing her room you know this that and we are like hey you need to go you know you need to visit here so it i think team building is so important and i think it is very intentional that you do it and the onus again lies on leaders right because young people they're like yeah i don't know what to do but when it comes from top right uh, you know for your own teams i think it's just such an amazing opportunity to get to know people in a different light right and so having chill sessions uh, you know don't start a meeting right off the bat by hey this is the agenda for the meeting yes. how's everyone doing yes. how are you um, you know how's everyone what's what's happening um, you know share a joke we keep sharing memes you know another thing <laughs> friday i call it as emoji day so everyone on slack just goes crazy with emojis today is friday and they'll just put all kind of emojis uh, so yeah those are some fun things that you can do to team build you know informal settings that you can create to to literally build your team and what not yeah that's just my perspective Or to many. Yeah, I think I got some tips too. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Okay, uh, there are few more questions. Um, Wait, I think Manny had her uh, her side oh, to okay. share. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to really share. It just uh, enhanced that very thing that Sam said. Be intentional. It's very strange. Even as we talk, um, there there are two types of people. One is they want to keep work and like personal so separate that um, you actually have no emotional connect to anyone at work. which i also feel is not so good and there are some people who just don't know how to draw the line between the two and therefore you know you're bringing work home and then your personal life gets affected so i think both these extremes are really dangerous um for us as people so even when he when you're talking it's essential for us to be intentional to build some rapport with the people in your team ask them how their day was how their weekend was it doesn't cost you you're probably not even listening but you know make that effort to just have something a little more than work uh, like just yesterday after my work call somebody actually called me and they were like hey i'd like to share something with you there's something that happened at work and i didn't know who else to trust hey this is a really big deal you that they find you trustworthy without you having ever met them this is a girl that came down from canada started working with us virtually like who am i she doesn't know me i'm not her friend but because you chose to go one extra mile to ask her how her day was you're building a friendship that that you know also causes you to have a place of influence so i would definitely say like sam said be intentional whatever it doesn't have to take a lot of your time but just ask that extra question just you know make that little effort as well as just know when to shut off like this this work life balance is really essential like we have to know that work show excellence you know don't bring out those frustrations at home don't know when to shut off cuz if you don't have the ability to say hey now's family time or hey you know i'm also going to develop some hobbies a hobby is in the process eventually what's going to happen is work is going to take over and you'll get worn out like you you'll run really well and then you'll just faint at the very end the the ability is to be able to be consistent and in order to do so you will have to have work life balance i developed some hobbies like becky was saying like i i take care of my plants i i spend time with my dog uh, my family i ensure that For, you know, follow her dedicated and I instagram have too. meals together i'm saying just make these little things to ensure that you're setting work aside for some family time or you know personal time thanks thank you uh, there is one more which has just come in as young professionals do you all follow covid guidelines staying home not meeting people unnecessarily avoid travel etc are you guys doing that <laughs> i mean we are forced to do it now <laughs> <laughs> so there's no question of breaking any rules but i mean yeah there is wisdom to this and i think uh, companies are uh, you know everyone's everyone's intelligent so i think yeah i think just follow what you know your hr protocols are and um yeah stay safe at <laughs> this season <laughs> and i really believe it's an act of honor i want to really say this because when you there's no point in you rebelling against the system unless it's absolutely necessary unless it's an act of compromising character is what i really feel like in your ability to even 
agree to these guidelines you are doing in my opinion what is right you are still reflecting a christ like heart and you know causing a certain peace not turmoil so yeah okay um there's one question it said how to ask for god's wisdom in business <laughs> that's a big one yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um many want to go or Uh, for me god's wisdom in every step of my life is an actual essential thing i'm honestly telling you like my very firm belief is like you said everybody has their own track what god plants in your heart only god can enable you to fulfill and you know other people will have a hundred things to say hey they don't know what god's placed in your heart you know so where i really want to very firmly say if god places something on your heart run to him for wisdom run to him for guidance run to him for you know next steps if he places people you know in your heart to reach out to do that i'm saying don't do this without god you know you it's essential for you to know that so this is like one of um the things that i really take away from this i need his wisdom in order to do what he has planted in me so yeah let me pause there a little bit because these are all the question which were submitted anybody on the call who want to like unmute themselves and ask questions directly to sam or manny or anything that you may have anyone who wants to do that yeah come on guys let's keep this interactive although we don't have the answers <laughs> we'll ask rebecca to answer them <laughs> so you can unmute yourselves and feel free yeah feel free to ask uh, okay while you think you know i will take another question from what was submitted how do i stay on course with all the obstacles yeah i mean that's exactly um, i think what the session was really about like staying on course will actually require you to be intentional will actually require you to go i will overcome i know it sounds like you being a child but this is actually what is essential you will have to want to overcome before you overcome you know what i mean you have to make your mind to overcome in order to get over that obstacle you have to pace yourself right so i just really want to encourage you to just know that obstacles are inevitable they will come you'll get over this one there will be another one that comes ahead there it will probably be bigger than this i'm saying obstacles are inevitable but change the way you look at it it's good for you it's building you up it's an opportunity for you to overcome and be more like jesus so yeah yeah just just one thing on this um obstacles right it's about your mindset and your perspective you know uh, so how i picture this is if you take a marble and think about the marble as your obstacle if the if the marble is so close to your eye that obstacle is like like a mountain in front of you but as manny said when you know your goal when you you know it could this even applies to day to day activities a season and lifelong right if you know what you want to accomplish at the end of the day or at the end of a season or at the end of whatever decade right that marble then comes here because the goal is so bigger so much more bigger so i think it's your mindset and your perspective um you know it's as simple as that i think sometimes we just get so overworked with looking at this marble at such a you know oh, it's right here guys like you know and it just becomes this big mountain but i think uh, that it's it's a perspective and mindset thing uh, which manny shared in her first slide so yeah even yeah. keep walking on water i don't know if you guys remember i just want to share this analogy it's my favorite it keeps me going in life so i hope it does the same to you like as long as peter looked at jesus he was walking on water the moment he looked at the storm he began to sink and that really applies to us the only one that can get us through these obstacles in life is god is jesus if you focus on how great the obstacle is like sam said you will begin to be overwhelmed by it you will begin to sink in order to be able to walk over it you have to walk with your focus on jesus what are you doing how are you going to get me through what do you want me to do in order to run and overcome this so yeah okay anyone else who wants to unmute and speak any questions that's coming up now 
everyone sorted they like i think they're tired <laughs> no they must all be thinking okay i've already sent all questions i think they let, let them answer that <laughs> okay i'll take one from here um okay i think it's on there are a couple of questions i'm just trying to see you know we're not repeating that uh how to discipline self and spiritual growth if i may want to yeah oh okay so spiritual growth please join apc read all of <laughs> pastors books attend every sermon <laughs> no i'm kidding <laughs> come to christian professionals no but actually to be honest that's been my journey you know um you know while there are seasons where i couldn't push myself i just stayed faithful to god's church right and community and i had i i made a prayer lord send me spiritual friends i that was something that i lacked and you know just surrounding yourself with the right people yes. uh, i think is so important you know um and i think that has really immensely blessed my life having close spiritual friends you know um uh, attending church these are very like normal things but you will not it will inherently speak to you indirectly you know uh, god will just speak to you sunday after sunday serving him you know in whatever way you can do uh, you know that that has been my journey and and you know obviously uh, have a good word life you know th- these are just normal things you know worship god daily uh, you know read his word i think you will gain so much of his wisdom yeah yeah uh, i mean uh, one of the things that you mentioned right so having a community you know we have self groups having accountability partner i think everybody sort of like goes through this you know uh, dips in their you know whatever they're going through in life sometimes it's overwhelming and you may not be able to focus but uh, for me i think personally it helped to have an accountability partner from the community right from the cell group or you know from church friend circle somebody who checks you know how you're doing spiritually um so somebody who is there to talk about it i think it helps me sort of like stay focused on you know uh, making sure that my eyes are on god and not on you know challenges that's around me um anyone else who wants to bring up any question right now we have about 5 minutes left any other question or uh, one last question perhaps from the session who is logged in please unmute yourself and you can ask looks like okay i'll just take one from this list in case people are don't want to talk about um i think there was like how do you create opportunities to share about christ in virtual environment that we work now yeah i think i'll i'll take that um i think first it's it's so important to establish a relationship with people um actually before that first uh, be competent in your workplace <laughs> nobody will listen to you <laughs> you know they'll be like oh yeah this guy knows what he's talking about you know so first be competent i see a lot of young people just slacking and your opportunity is lost there you know i think when you create for yourself a high perform i mean when you yourself are a high performing individual i think there only you are opening one door second is uh you know don't i mean before even like how i'm just talking about opportunities opening i think it's so important to form relationships not just work relationships but personal relationships right be a friend like manu was saying and i think through that through those little conversations that you have i think that is your perfect opportunity to share about god uh, everyone knows in my workplace i am a church guy so that in itself is one door open everyone just knows this guy to one church guy only goes every sunday and i think when we have conversations about that i think it's an amazing opportunity to share about christ right um, uh, so yeah just just couple of things you know one is be competent um, uh, be hard working and then be a friend to a person and then i think that's your space to really you know get your opportunity to share about christ yep absolutely so i think uh, i i would love to share about this because i've had two different instances um i started working when i was 16 when i was 
living in London. And so there was a portion of my life that I was working um, even before like I got like I began to transform my life and really encounter Jesus. So I remember that first year I was extremely good at my job. I was best salesperson, best this for a long time. And I was living in London. So I met somebody else with a person from my workplace and she introduced me and said, hey, this is Manuela. And um, she was she was British and she said, oh, Manuela, that's a really weird name. Are you are you is, is that your real Indian name? So, you know, we're having that conversation. I said, no, that is my Indian name. I am Manuela. This is my full name. It's not a call center name or something. And so we were having this conversation and immediately this friend of mine jumped in because at that point, this is before I got saved. I was my lifestyle was not in its best place. And she said this on her own. And this moment really changed the rest of my life. So I'd like to share it. She said, hey, don't be worried about her name. She's not one of these holy girls. I, I'd really like to say this out loud because this is a moment my entire life changed. People are noticing. This was outside of the workplace with a work colleague. And she's introducing me saying, I'm Manuela. She said, oh, is that a Christian name? And she said, hey, Edward, don't worry. She's not one of these holy girls. Why? Because I was no different from anybody else. Right? And then years later, when, when I... Um, when I found Jesus, I had grown in the Lord. And, you know, I, I worked at this place for five years. I had a friend that, you know, I, I had built so much relationship with. She's still one of my closest friends. And there was a point in time where her engagement fell off and she came to me and I had the opportunity there to pray for her. And, you know, I got to pray for her. She began to reach out to me every day for prayer because she felt some peace the first time we prayed. And without without knowing, like 30 days in, 60 days in, she was coming with me to church. I brought her to ABC. The thing is, you can't force God on anybody. Your workplace is a medium. It's an opportunity for you. But you have to be graceful. Walking around saying Jesus is the same, repent of your ways, they're like, get out. Like nobody listens to you until you have that space in their life. Right? So like, like Sam said, first be a person of great character. Uh, this thing changed my life. Character is who you are when nobody's watching. This one line got me straight. Because this is independent of whether it's a thought, word or deed. What are you when nobody's watching? This is the same every day. Be somebody of character. People are noticing how you respond. The words you say, whether you swear. I'm not joking. Everybody knows me as the girl who doesn't swear. Why? Because it's not common. So be like being somebody of character is already going to, you know, put you on a path to minister. And secondly, build those relationships. If you build them, there will be a point where there is need and you can pray. And that prayer will change. Like the amount of people that I've been able to minister to and, and bring to the Lord, I'll tell you, they all have one thing in common. They were all my friends first. I was intentional about developing a relationship first with them. So I just want to encourage you. Everybody else, be a woman or man of character. They will notice you. But to your friends, go deep so that you have that opportunity to share your life. Yeah. Thanks, Manny. Thanks, Sam, for uh, coming and sharing, you know, your experiences and wisdom. And I'm sure that, you know, personally, I took away a lot of stuff. Um, so, you know, if there is anybody who has any prayer request, you know, while we do the closing prayer, please let us know. Um, you can probably just message us. Otherwise, uh, you know, please write to us at uh, the email ID that's been given in the chat box. You can reach out to us for any of those, you know, workplace related conversations or help. Um, we'll close the session with a prayer. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rebecca, for hosting us. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, for for to us. Okay. Thank you for listening to us. The little that we've learned. Thank you for <laughs> allowing us to share it. <laughs> Mary, if, if you can just, you know, lead us in closing prayer. Sure. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to get together as believers, Father, that have been placed in so many different workplaces. Father, I thank you that you are an intentional God and you chose the place that you wanted us to be planted in, God. Father, I ask that you will give us the grace and the wisdom to represent you in our workplaces, to be able to have the spirit of excellence. God, give us the grace to be able to be excellent 
because that is who you are god i just ask that you will enable us to walk the course that you have set before us father our personal courses father with you as our goal and i ask that you will enable us to walk towards you and not be distracted by the people on the left or the right father not be held back by our past father Lord, I just ask that we will upskill to grow, constantly grow with every season and obstacle that you've placed within us, Father. I ask for the gift of persistence, Father. The gift of faithfulness, Father. And I ask that you will enable us to be salt and light in our workplaces, Father. We just ask that you will give us the grace, that you will lead us and give us the wisdom, Father. We are fully dependent on you. Use us for your glory, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for your time and hanging in there. Um, you know, wish you all a very nice weekend. Happy weekend. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.